Last time, we talked about Hebrew pronouns. These were standalone words. This time, we're going to talk about pronoun suffixes. So this week, we're talking about pronoun suffixes. The technical term is pronominal suffixes. Pronominal means pronouns. It's fancy lingo. Now, in Hebrew, when the pronoun is functioning as an object, meaning like him or her, I hit the ball to him, I hit the ball to her, it uses the pronominal suffix form. If it's possessive, his ball, her ball, it uses the pronominal suffix form, meaning it's not standalone. As a suffix, it tacks on to the noun that it modifies. That's what we mean by suffix. You know they're possessive when they appear on nouns, like his ball, her ball. If it appears on a preposition or the direct object marker, it's objective. I hit the ball to him. I hit the ball to her. Now there's two kinds of pronominal suffixes. The key here is to be able to recognize them and note the similarities between the two kinds. First common singular uses either Hirik Yod or Pathak Yod. Either way, there's a Yod. Second masculine singular uses final cough plus comets or Segel Yod final cough plus comets. Either way, second masculine singular uses final cough plus a comets. Second feminine singular uses final cough plus a shava, or it uses the uh, the I and diphthong, pathak, yod, hirik, plus the final cough plus shava. Either way, second feminine singular uses final cough plus shava. Third masculine singular uses a holom vav, or it uses comets, yod, vav. Either way, there's a vav in third masculine singular. In the third feminine singular, you'll have a comets underneath the last consonant of the noun or the preposition or the direct object marker. Then after that, you'll have a hey with a mapik. The mapik is a dot in the middle of the hey. Now remember, it cannot be a dogish forte or dogish lene because those have to occur in a begad kafat or cannot occur in a guttural or resh. This is neither. So it's not dogish forte, it's not dogish lene. It's mapik. And mapik simply is a way of distinguishing this is third feminine singular when attached to a preposition or direct object marker or a noun, I think, maybe, possibly, I don't know. Now that's one type, there's another kind. You could have a segel yod plus a hay with a comets underneath the hay and no ma peak. Either way, you clearly see a hay at the end and somewhere a comets. That's the key in the third feminine singular. In the first common plural, we have noon plus shirik. Or in the other type, we have tsere yod noon shirik. Either way, in first common plural, there's noon shirik. Second masculine plural, we have kaf segel final mem. Or we have tsere yod kaf segel final mem. Either way, there's cough, segel, final mem. Now in second person feminine plural, it's almost identical to the masculine plural, but instead of a final mem, it's a final noon. So on the one hand, we have cough, segel, final noon, or we have sere yod, cough, segel, final noon. Either way, we have cough, segel, final noon. The third person plural follows the same kind of pattern that we see in the second person plural. So for instance, with the third person masculine plural, 
we have hey segel final mem or we have sere yod hey segel final mem that's the masculine plural in the third masculine plural either way we see hey segel final mem so as you can imagine the third feminine plural is going to switch to a final noon so we have hey segel final noon or we have sere yod hey segel final noon so either way we see hey segel final noon now i told you there's two types and that's true but there are a few alternate forms to be aware of first common singular the first form is hiric yod sometimes you'll see a noon hiric yod in third masculine singular it's a holum vav sometimes you'll see a hey shiric the third feminine singular is the comets plus a hey with a mapik Sometimes instead you'll just see a hey with a comets. Third masculine plural, you'll see a hey segel final mem. Other times you'll just see a comets plus a final mem. Likewise with third feminine plural, normally you'll see a uh, hey segel final noon, but other times you'll just see comets final noon. The reason why there's two types of these pronominal suffixes is because Type one is for singular nouns. Type two is for plural nouns. That makes sense, right? Because type two, that's two. Two is plural, two means plural. So plural nouns take type two. Yeah, that makes sense. So for example, Susi, my horse. Susai, my horses. See the difference? So in the case of the pronominal suffixes, the pronominal suffix, the type used determines the the plurality or the singularity of the noun why is that well because normally the singularity or the plurality of the noun is determined by whatever comes at the end but because we're adding the suffixes at the end it can mess with how those combinations occur and so as a result what happens is the pronominal suffixes take the place of the noun endings. And so you have to know the difference between type one and type two so you can determine if that noun is singular or plural. It's not that hard. Here's a few more. Suska, your horse. Suseka, your horses. These are masculine. Susek, your horse. Feminine. Susayek, your horses. Feminine. Suso, his horse. Susav, his horses. Susa. Her horse, Suseha. Her horses, Susenu. Our horse, Susenu. Our horses, Suschem. Your horse, your being masculine plural. Susechem, your horses. Horses is plural, but your here is masculine plural as well. Suschen, your horse. Your being plural feminine. Susechen your horses, where both your and horses are plural. Susam, their horse, meaning masculine plural. Susehem, their horses, where their is masculine plural. Susan, their horse, where their is feminine plural. Susehen, their horses, where their is feminine plural. You'll note the commonality with the plural nouns is that it's pretty much attached with a yod. So when you see the yod before the pronominal suffix, that tells you, oh, it's a plural noun. And another thing that you'll notice is that these pronominal suffixes tend to correlate, even if minimally, with their corresponding regular old pronouns. So for example, we learned last time that ani means I. Well, lo and behold, you add hiric yod to a noun and it becomes my. Do you see the correlation? This one's a bit of a stretch, not gonna lie. But if you look at the second person masculine singular pronoun, ata, compare that with the pronominal suffix final cough plus a comets. It shares the same vowel. Compare 
with at. Note that at ends in a shiva. Look at the pronominal suffix. It ends in a shiva. It's not an exact science between the two, but there does appear to be a correlation. A helpful exercise might be to draw up a poster with the pronouns on one side and the pronominal suffixes on the other side, and then use some color coding to compare and contrast. But whatever, you do you, boo. Now don't get tripped up on the first common singular type one and first common singular type two pronominal suffixes. I like to remember it because the type one, which connotes a singular noun, has hyric, a little dot. That little dot means one. When it has a pathak, the line, that means more than one. Don't get those mixed up. Nouns that end in segel plus a hey will often drop the segel plus the hey. Look at sade, field, for example. When the pronominal suffix comes in, the segel hey drops out and in its place is the pronominal suffix. This makes learning your vocabulary really important. You need to be able to know that there's supposed to be a hey there. That way, when you go to look it up in the lexicon, you don't get lost. Memorize your vocabulary. It'll do you good. So we looked at sus, horse. That's a masculine noun. Let's look at a feminine noun. Let's use Torah. There's no better feminine noun, is there? Torah means teaching, law, instruction. Torathi, first common singular, my law. Torothai, first common singular, my laws. Torathka, your law. Torotheka, your laws. Torathek, your law. This one being feminine. Feminine, your. Torothaik, your laws. Your being feminine singular here. Toratho, his law. Torothav, his laws. Torotha, her law. Torotheha, her laws. Torothenu, our law. Torothenu, our laws. Torachem, your law. Your being masculine plural here. Torothechem, your laws. Your being masculine plural. Torachen, your law. Your being feminine plural. Torothechen, your laws. Your being feminine plural. Toratham, their law. Their being masculine plural. Torothechem, their laws. Their being masculine plural. Torathan, their law. Their being feminine plural. Torothehen, their laws. Their being feminine plural. Note with these feminine nouns, the hey will swap to a tav when we're adding pronominal suffixes. Now, unlike the masculine plural nouns, feminine plural nouns retain their up endings. Whereas in masculine, the im drops out when we're adding pronominal suffixes. So it's a nice little difference. Now, keep in mind some nouns break the rules. Well, they don't really break the rules. I guess they follow the rules. They're just different, okay? And so the vowels can change a little bit when we're dealing with pronominal suffixes. But you'll notice that the consonants, they don't change unless the hey drops out. We don't count that. And the pronominal suffixes, they don't change. So if you know your vocabulary, you should be able to rely on the consonants. Plus, you're going to memorize, right? You're going to memorize the type 1 and type 2 and the alternate form type 1 pronominal suffixes. So with those three things in mind, your ability to know the vocabulary, your ability to recall uh, what the consonants are in the vocabulary, your ability to recall the pronominal suffixes, you're going to be able to figure these out. Now, I mentioned earlier that you'll be able to identify plural nouns because the pronominal suffix will add a yod. That's true, except for when it isn't. Monosyllabic nouns, meaning they're a noun with just one syllable. They will add a yod. 
before the pronominal suffix. One of the realities of Hebrew is that it follows the rules except for when it doesn't. So with these particular nouns, it adds the yod even when the noun is singular. How can you tell that it's singular instead of plural? The vowel pointings note the difference. Achi, my brother. Achai, my brothers. You see the difference in the vowels? Achika, your brother. Acheka, your brothers. You see the difference in the nouns? Achik, your brother. Achayik, your brothers. Do you see the difference in the vowels? Achiv, his brother. Echav, his brothers. Do you see the difference in the vowels? Achiha, her brother. Acheha, her brothers. Do you see the difference in the nouns? Achinu, our brother. Achenu, our brothers. Achichem, your brother. Achichem, your brothers. Do you see the difference in the in the nouns? Achichen, your brother. Achichen, your brothers. Do you see the difference in the nouns? Achichem, their brother. Achichem, their brothers. Do you see the difference in the vowels? Achichen, their brother. Achichen, their brothers. Do you see the difference in the vowels? So, while the yod can be very helpful, it's not an exact science when determining is the noun singular or is the noun plural. Now this is only for those monosyllabic nouns. So it should be more rare, but you, you need to be aware of it. Now we've looked at a couple of nouns, but remember prepositions can take a pronominal suffix. When it does, prepositions can take either type one or type two. When it comes to prepositions, you just need to be able to recognize them because prepositions don't have number. I'll throw some examples up here for you. But again, it's all about recognition. Don't worry about memorizing anything here. If you can understand type one and type two in relation to nouns, they will come very easily when it comes to prepositions. Another thing to be able to recognize is the preposition ch with pronominal suffixes because the spelling of ch changes ever so slightly. Take a look. Kamoni, like me. Kamocha, like you. Kamoch, like you. Kamohu, like him. Kamoha, like her. Kamuna, like us. Kachem, like you. Kachen, like you. Kahem, like them. Kahen, like them. Also be able to recognize mean, which means from. When it combines with pronominal suffixes, it changes a little bit too. Mimeni, from me. Mimka, from you. Mimech, from you. Mimenu, from him. Mimena, from her. Mimenu, from us. Mikem, from you. Miken, from you. Mayhem, from them. Mayhen, from them. You'll notice that when it comes to mean, third masculine singular and first common plural are identical. Context will be key. Note also the definite direct object marker takes pronominal suffixes. But you have to remember the direct object marker can look a lot like the preposition et with. So how do you tell the difference? The vowels. The vowels tell the difference. So on the one hand, the direct object marker, once you add the pronominal suffixes, it takes a holum. So the segel or the tsere changes to a holum. That's the number one difference. If you're dealing with the preposition, the preposition takes a dagesh. So take a look at the direct object markers with the pronominal suffixes. Othi, me, othka, you, othak, you, otho, him, otha, her, othanu, us, ethchem, you, ethchen, you, otham, them, othan, them, 
So compare those with the preposition et with me, itka with you, itak with you, ito with him, ita with her, itanu with us, itchem with you, itchen with you, itam with them, itan with them. So clearly when we compare the direct object marker and the preposition, when we add the pronominal suffixes, they're clearly different. Just be aware of the difference. Another one that can be a little difficult is im with versus am people. Now think back to what we saw with the direct object marker et versus with. The preposition took a hierarch. Okay? The preposition took a hierarch. The same is true with im. It will take a hierarch. Am, which is a noun, will not take a hierarch. So compare. Here's the noun. Am, people. Ami. My people, Am, Amka, your people, Amek, your people, Amo, his people, Ama, her people, Amenu, our people, Amchem, your people, Amchen, your people, Amam, their people, Aman, their people. So Am, people, takes a pathak all throughout. Im, with, takes a hierarch as follows, imi, with me, imcha, with you, imak, with you, imo, with him, ima, with her, imanu, with us, imachem, with you, imachen, with you, imam, with them, iman, with them. So you can see the difference. Im takes a hierarch throughout. Am takes a pathak throughout. The difference is in the details of the pointing system. So pay attention to the vowels. They're important. So learn your vocabulary. Learn the type 1 and type 2 and alternate type 1 forms of the pronominal suffixes. Be aware of some of the differences in some of these words. But if you learn your vocabulary and you learn these pronominal suffixes, it's going to help you go a long way in being able to translate and recognize what you're working with in the Hebrew Bible. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you're enjoying this journey. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this material today. Otherwise, keep watching. Here's a video that you can watch on the pronouns. Until next time, bye-bye.